Okay, so I think WiMAX has the clear advantage of, uh, of, uh, of an ecosystem that's ready. The chipset's ready, infrastructure, software, everything is ready sooner. Okay, whereas on the GSM LTE path, I think that I think it's going to be more more popular. Um, but they, just like the way the Mac and the, the PC both coexist, I think that the two systems will coexist. I think that over time, the uh, the LTE will will win. It will be more popular worldwide. It will be a more seamless roaming experience. It's cheaper to deploy. You have fewer cells per mile than than WiMAX. You just can't get a, can't get away from that uh, arithmetic. Uh, so. I mean, uh, with with, uh, with fundamental economics working against you, like in the United States here, one of the biggest problems is the main WiMAX supporter Sprint failed to step up, well, because of their troubles else in the 700 megahertz auction, and that is like the greatest piece of spectrum error auction in, in recent history. I mean, in many decades, it's got fantastic propagation characteristics. It'll go through buildings for miles and miles and miles. So if you had a choice, you know, putting up one tower and just okay, okay, I light up San Francisco just like that, one tower, okay. And uh, over time, as too many, as a lot of people subscribe in San Francisco, maybe you can split the cells, but have more towers. But at least you can start real quick. 700 megahertz LTE, and uh, and since the, the the guys who took 700 megahertz have already declared LTE as, as their preferred as their preferred choice, I mean, I think that more is, is is headed down the wrong path. So I think that WiMAX will be there, but it will be a minority solution. Well, Mike. So first of all, I, we're not religious about this WiMAX or LTE. You know, uh, we believe that we need broadband. Uh, cheap um, and affordable broadband uh, into uh, laptops, into mids, into uh, all the cell phones eventually. So today it's wide max. LTE is a technology uh, promise of the future. When it happens, yes, it will it will come in. There are you know, big uh, uh, industry forces behind it, so it will happen. They will coexist. I think uh, wide max uh, has a tremendous advantage today in terms of growing the emerging markets where. There's a need for uh, DSL or cable uh, analog, which is uh, wireless, and it's happening in a phenomenal way with WiMAX today, as we speak. Uh, the mobile WiMAX is uh, essentially uh, here. It's going to be, you know, from the uh, statements made by Sprint and others, uh, being launched uh, sometime uh, in the uh, remainder of the year. Uh, yes, uh, LTE in this uh, country with 700 megahertz, which uh, Scott is referring to, you know, that. Uh, is a technical argument, you know, I could have a, a lengthy discussion on that, but, uh, you know, the, uh, as, a, as you take a look at very dense uh, uh, metro areas and you take a look at the, the data rate uh, required, the few things which uh, come together, which I don't know if uh, LTE solves it, these are fundamental, these have to do with uh, not the technology LTE or WiMAX, but fundamentals of, how, fundamentals of how much spectrum is available, okay, which I don't believe uh, is there in many of the carriers, uh, and there's one thing going for Sprint and Clear Wire. I think that this deal they've announced is the One Nation Wide Network with a fabulous amount of spectrum, which uh, helps them give the kind of uh, rich data services which will be required for uh, the type of applications we are looking at. So it's not about the technology; it's really about the spectrum first. That's one aspect of it. The second aspect is you know LTE and uh, WiMAX are both actually very similar technologies. They're both OFTM, MIMO. And there are many other attributes I can get into. They are actually amazingly similar technologies, and at the end of the day, you know, five years from now, they're both mature. They will have very similar performances. So it's really a question of you know uh, of the first adopter advantage. So companies which are, are getting to WiMAX today, they will probably push that agenda. Companies which are on 3G or GSM today and are willing to wait, such as at and Verizon, they will go towards LTE. I I don't see that as a uh, uh, as a battle as much as you know, the two ecosystems are evolving, there are very similar technologies, neither has a magical answer, and they will coexist. And uh, I don't think uh, that economically one is preferred over the other because they're both disruptive technologies in terms of how you change from today's uh, 3G network to, to the next generation 4G network. They both involve a whole new backend in terms of IT-based uh, network as opposed to proprietary uh, core networks. And it will involve strong halls, you know, to install new base stations, you know, the 3G base stations today cannot do LTE. So it's going to be, you know, uh, a transition for the industry to go to 4G. Uh, I actually like to see both of them. Having WiMAX put pressure on LTE to accelerate is a great thing for the consumers. So in my mind, if WiMAX becomes a niche, but it accelerates the LTE deployment because, the, you know, the LTE can wake up and say, oh God, you've got to get there faster. I think the consumer wins in the end. And uh, from a computer's perspective, you have broadband access available. 
whether it's the PTO, uh, whether it's LTO, YMAX, we love both in the end. Okay, as long as it makes the computers and the computing devices more relevant.